Alanis Morissette, the superstar, speaking out about battling postpartum depression, giving a voice to what it's really like to battle the baby blues. And we're going to talk to Alanis in just a moment. But first, take a look. Thank you, frailty. Thank you, consequence. She's lyrically fearless. I know the version of me. Is she perverted like me? Recognized for her unique vocals and iconic breakup songs. It's like ready, With seven albums and seven Grammy Awards, Alanis Morissette is an alternative rock goddess. But now, 38-year-old Morissette is a woman in love with a husband, rapper Mario MC Solide Treadwell. And a 20-month-old son named Ever. He became the center of national attention when Morissette came forward with her views on attachment parenting, saying she'll breastfeed until Ever decides he's done. I'm always available if he needs me, period. Um, I love snuggling and sleeping next to him. The songstress recently admitted she suffered baby blues, an intense struggle with postpartum depression. But now, with her first album out in four years, life is blissful, and Alanis is ready to take the world by storm again. Classic. I'm sitting here laughing with Alanis because, of course, her son is named Ever. My son's named David, yeah. and you're so lyrical and such a terrific writer Thanks. that uh, you were saying that just his just name just through. came yeah. to you. And how is it to be a mom to this 20-year-old little angel? It's pretty amazing. As all moms, I think, would say in general, it's... Uh, it's a blessing he's a teacher for me every day. The attunement that I have for him is really teaching me how to actually take care of myself better too because I didn't realize what a difference there was between the love I give him and the love I actually offer myself. So. Will we see a difference in the you that we know on stage because of Ever and because of all the things that he has taught you? I think so. There's this intimacy that comes from commitment and there's this healing that is begotten from that. So mm -hmm. with my son and my husband and my marriage and there's a lot of healing that's going on where songwriting was really cathartic. Yeah. Yeah. And it moved all this energy, but it didn't necessarily heal anything. So, oh, that's interesting. I, and I'm certain we'll hear that when we uh, get a listen to some of your songs yeah. from Havoc and Bright Lights. You've got a new album, mm -hmm. um, but you're also uh, really out there talking a lot about the baby blues, as mm -hmm. they call them. But the reality mm -hmm. is, it's postpartum depression. Yes. Why did you feel the need to share? I didn't feel the need to share. It just was part of the autobiographical transparency value that I have. Mm -hmm. You know, I really think transparency really levels the playing field for all of us and Amen. renders our humanness okay, yep. so to speak. So yeah, it was just a really intense time. And, and if I could share anything with anyone that's going through it, it would be to encourage them to seek help and reach out a little earlier than I did. I think the feminist movement went through being very sort of dependent and owned, mm -hmm. you know, we were property and then we moved into being autonomous and individualistic and, right. you know, empowered on our own burning our bras as such yeah and then now 2012 is about this gorgeous interdependence and saying I'm really empowered and I need you I need help yeah, I love that yeah it's uh, really great and it's okay to to not be perfect and not get back in yeah. shape in two minutes yeah I think and it's a dangerous message as as people in the public eye to imply that there's this perfectionism going on that yeah it's epidemic I think in the West this perfectionism it's dangerous for us were you what was your reaction to uh, the attachment, you know, brouhaha. You were very yeah. open and honest about about your belief in breastfeeding, and you'll continue yeah. to breastfeed er, ever until he says, till he's peace done. out. Yeah, and I'm in a luxurious <laughs> position, in a privileged position enough, economically speaking and otherwise, to to provide that for him. I realize that it's a challenge for a lot of families to provide that, even though they may want to. And if there's anything I would aspire to offer to my own self and to people in general, it would be to render the stages of development as sort of common knowledge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The way that they go through this attachment into exploration and identity where we say yes you are Elastigirl you know we mirror them and they go into this competency stage they all sort of bleed into each other they're linear in some ways but they overlap too so just have that be sort of a normal you know common understanding of, of the development and that this development these stages not being thwarted as best as is possible yeah. can create a really conscious planet where we take care of each other all right yeah well, ever <laughs> is gorgeous and as are you I look Thanks. We're going to talk a little bit more to you in the next half hour, Great. and we're going to hear you sing yeah. songs from your new album, mm. and perhaps a favorite. Yes, you are. All right, everybody, <laughs> stay tuned for that, but first let's get back to the desk with the gang.
really looking forward to that. And you, there's so many things that you said, Alana, and it's about changing and evolving and growing, and you're a great example of that.